There we go. Here we go. Oh, Mic drop. <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> guys. And he showed me his gun and pulled out his gun and, uh, and he was like, yo, give me the phone or I'm gonna... And like, I should have just given him the... Um, and then he started hitting me on the back of the head with the butt of the gun. And then like, I'm still not letting go. And I got stuck in the bottom of the rock and I f about 20 stone guys fell on top of me, a couple of Samoans, Fijians and Tongans and I remember just feeling this pressure and I just go, pop. And my rib like literally popped well here we go this is the maiden voyage of down deep wow what a moment i've got mr kent langefeld to the right i've got mr johnny golding to the far right on the flank <laughs> We'll tell you why he laughed in a minute, but I just want to say a massive thanks to everyone that's been a supporter of this podcast. We've got to the point now. We've got an amazing guy behind the camera there. Big shout out to Maurice Kukamur. And uh, guys, hearty welcome to Down Deep. Well, thanks for having us. Cool. Cheers, Steve. Thanks for coming on. Before we carry on, I'm just going to have to say a massive thanks to the people that help make this happen to the people that help put food on my family's plate. I've got to say a massive thanks to the guys over at Good Sheet. This is what I wipe my bum with. It's great. It's made out of sugar cane. Surf Clay, Ocean Freedom Co. This is also very earth friendly, no bad chemicals, not tested on any animals, which is the most important thing. With Zoogles, these guys keep me healthy and fit. Every morning I have a little smoothie so pure. These are little sprays that you can use on your toilet. It's all good chemicals. All good chemicals. So pure, amazing stuff. Thank you very much, so pure. <laughs> I'm not plastic. What a great organization. These beautiful double walled flasks. Um, and that was for a turtle, I believe, out of Fleas Bai. Last but not least, Numuti. There's two versions of this. There's the Thrive. You guys have tried some. Yeah, yeah, it's super nice. Can you take a sip now, please, so that I know that you're not... I'm all gone. I liked it that much. Oh, Sorry, you mate. could have just faked it. Can I have another one? Yes, of course. Um, here we go. It's not very cold, but you can crack it open on shot, buddy. And there we go. Kent? This See you at the bottom. Cheers. There we go. Numuti. This is the Thrive, the cola and tea dough flavor, and it basically... Gives you a little kick. It's got some caffeine in it. And the key organic is skeletium. Describe the flavor. That's <laughs> pretty good. But I would say, like, for me, it's not oversweet. It's just the right balance. Mm. Like, it's nice and tasty. And the caffeine's going to get me through this podcast, I think. Mm. So the link's down below to all of my amazing sponsors. Why don't we start with the... I mean, Kent, what do you reckon we start with, Johnny? Because he's actually like an overseas slash South African guest. So we always kind of to... Go for let's be polite. Come on, let's be polite. Guys, are too nice. Yeah, shame. I mean, because you're all going to lose us again. So. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> let's yeah. add a little... I Shall wish we... I could come back on that. But, uh, <laughs> sure, sure, shall we add a little context to this okay. as to why Kent is laughing and why he thinks <laughs> this is quite funny? I think we need to... Kent is not funny. You, you, you see, Johnny, he's not just your atypical surfer from Komiki, which is where he now resides. And he's, he looks like a surfer who surfs a lot, trains a lot, takes uh, the sport quite seriously. But, and here's the bombshell, Johnny over here in a past life used to be a rugby player. Well, a professional rugby player, am I right? In a previous life I did, yes. yes. Okay. And... Who did you play for? Um, so I played for a few uh, different clubs in the UK, premiership clubs. So um, I started off at Leicester Tigers, which were the, the club back in the day. They were like unbeaten, which was great because I had the guys like Martin Johnson, Neil Back, you know, all the, the, the top guys there. And then I moved over to Northampton, which was like the big rivalry. So it was like, you know, it was like Man United, Man City. So I left. So yeah, just to get more game time. And then we actually ended up finishing second in the, the league. I 
for that move, so that was good. I'm not saying that's down to me, but uh, it was a good move. And then I moved um, from there to my hometown, which was like a dream come true. So I, I grew up in like a, on the east coast of the UK, which is like a small little uh, fishing fishing town. So it's, it's much like Comiki, actually. That's why I think we've ended up going that side because we stayed like a few different places and we ended up going to the little quiet town of Comiki because it's most like home. So, yeah, I ended up signing for Newcastle, which was like a dream. Um, because all my family are from there, and then the lifestyle as well. If, if you ever get a chance to go to Northumberland, uh, it's an amazing place. It's just basically, we've got like white sandy beaches, like non-stop coasting castles. It's like the border to where the Scottish, where, you know, they're going to come and invade England. Yes. The, the English were ready for it. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, it was amazing, and you can surf. It's amazing. The waves are great. It, it's just not like as consistent as here. So in the winter, you've got... Sorry, in the winter you've got great waves, in the summer you've got long spells where you need to find a new hobby. Get your fishing rod up, chase a mackerel or something, you know. Yes. Because you're going to have spells where you, you, you're not going to get wet. So, yeah, so that was amazing to play for Newcastle. And then I stayed there for, I must have been around about eight to ten years. And, uh, yeah, I finished my career there, actually, which is, which is good. Fantastic. And, and growing up on that coastline, is that um, at, at a young age, is that where you kind of formed a connection to the ocean? Yeah. Like, it's funny you said, like, I, I, I think, I, just, I don't know, I always felt this massive pull from the ocean, even like before I even considered surfing. It's just, I remember my grandma and granddad's house I used to go to for like, I used to go every week for Sunday dinner. The whole family would come there and they'd just eat everything on the table. And then, but they had a room upstairs which had a view to the sea. And I remember always just going, sitting up there myself and just staring at the sea, just like infatuated by it. And my granddad would even get a pair of binoculars and leave it there because he knew I was going to go up there. So it's like, just for me, that open space, there's no people, there's no, there's no dramas, there's no traffic. It's just like, it's pure, it's raw. Mm. And that's for me what the ocean is. Like, it's just, it's just that open space. And that's why when I go run, I go run on my own on the beaches, in the mountains, just the open space. Like, I think we all need it. You just need to get, like, a bit of space around you. And that's just the ocean for me. It's just, it's just like, it's a thing here. That's quite a, like, that's quite a jump in terms of, like, growing up, connecting with the ocean. But then you obviously grew up and realized that from a young age, you're, you're an athletic person. Um, you also played for, for England, the national t team, didn't you, for a while? Yeah, I had a bit of a spell with England. I was a bit unlucky. Well, well I was unlucky with the injuries in England. I, I remember I got called up like to the squad to go to the Six Nations, which is, which is a big tournament. And on the last game, we were playing Gloucester in the Premiership, which was a big game. Um, and I got stuck in the bottom of the rock, and I f about 20 stone guys fell on top of me, a couple of Samoans, Fijians, and Tongans. And I remember just feeling this pressure, and I just felt, and my rib just like literally popped. I remember running around, tackling, hitting people and feeling this thing moving. I was like, something doesn't feel right. It didn't hurt, mm. but I could feel it. And then I was like, mm. so I played on the game. And then uh, afterwards, it was like, Doc, and he was like, I lift up my shirt and you can, you can actually physically see it like still now. Like, and he's like, oh yeah, that's a broken rib. Well, I went and scanned and they're like, oh yeah, unfortunately, Johnny, it's a broken rib. And I was like, well, how long? They're like, oh, six weeks. Six nations is six weeks long the tournament and 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 yeah so i was in that team to go and then I, lo I lost out on that so that's the next one and then the next year was 2010 i got called up to the england australia tour that was when martin johnson was the coach we had like johnny wilkinson a fly half who was a teammate of mine and it was super exciting and then i also picked up an injury against the barbarians there again so it's just like and then achilles it was just timing for the england it never really worked out to have that career but like I've got no regrets. Like you know, but you played a few games for them. Yeah, yeah. But but it was like the Barbarians, and then we played the the Australian A team over there. So, and I was involved, and then we played like you know we played the the A stuff against Italy and stuff. So yeah, I was. I mean, but like you do have the jerseys. I do. My dad has them somewhere. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, that's the, yeah. yeah, yeah. He actually he, he rang me a little while. He said, Johnny, I got your jersey still now. Like I'm trying to clear out room in the loft. Do you want them? I'm like, nah. He's like, no, no, no. Maybe you should keep them for like Duke, my son. And Tallulah is, okay, okay, you keep them. <laughs> like, you know, I, for me, I don't look back on that. Like, I just, for me, I look back on, like, it was a great time, but I don't have a, you know, a wall of Johnny's shirts or anything like that. I just, I don't know. 
Yes. Okay. Well, Ken's a skateboarder, and we've got the saying as skaters, right? Bones heal and chicks dig scars. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, we want to see your rib, bro. Oh, my rib. Yeah, we want to see it. Get oh, it yeah. out, you ripped Very human good. being. Like, move, oh, move my know, goodness. Look oh, yeah, at yeah. that. Okay, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> keep your. Keep, calm down. Calm down. Yes, we've yeah. got an. We, That's we, all I've got. Kent, Kent we're not going to take our shirts off. It's so funny you say that about uh, your jerseys. Because as soon as I started skateboarding when yeah. I was 13, the first, the, one of the first things my dad asked me, you know, growing up in, in South Africa where organized sports is a thing, is like, can you get your province colors? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, daddy, I can't make Western province for skateboarding. I mean, now you possibly could. <laughs> yeah. Just, yes. But yeah. it's like for us, it's all about the journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. We'll come back to you, Johnny. And we'll yeah. also come back to the fact that We've got an Eng ex English rugby <laughs> player in the house. And guess what? This weekend, um, the Amaboka Boko is playing. No, but we can air this after the game. Uh, uh, yeah. No, we don't need to come back. So it's fine. We, we can move we, on. We, I don't we, mind that. We might put a little like, <laughs> snippet out today just to get a little bit of gravel around it. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll come yeah. to predictions later on, man. Um, thanks very much for that intro, man. Really yeah. interesting. Um, I was going to say to you, this wall of, of things, you know, the Romans, um, we, get, we, we have this saying resting on your laurels mm. and the romans used to collect laurel wreaths you know when they had yeah. the the games and that and the, apparently they used to to have these laurel wreaths in their homes and they used to put them up on the wall much in the same way as a yeah. rugby player or an athlete would have all their medals up in that yeah. and and uh, people used to come around and and they'd brag about their their past yeah. you know they'd always rest on their laurels yeah. you know and they'd pay so much attention to that um, but I think, and we'll get to this later, um, your transformation from rugby into your lifestyle now, you've described that as a, a past life. Yeah, I mean, I don't, for those who know me, I don't really ever talk about it. It doesn't define me. It's not, it's not important what I used to do. Like, I, I enjoyed it. It was great. And if someone wants to talk about it, of course, I'll talk to them about yeah, it. But yes. it's like... Um, no, it's, it's been and gone. It's like new chapters, new opportunities, and it's super exciting to do different things. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I fully committed to while I was in there, but now like, I'm, my first priority has been a good dad, second, to have fun, and third, just keep the grey matter going and do something, have some projects on the side. Drink some Numuti. Yeah, drink some Numuti and some beer on the side. And there we go. <laughs> Mr. Kent Langefeld, he yeah. needs no introduction in Cape Town. Everybody in the counterculture scene knows of this gentleman from meeting him at the old biscuit mill at his uh, his stand and his stall that he's had there. I don't know if you've still got it there, but no, I actually just stopped. I, I was actually just up the road in Woodstock for about twenty years. I'm shaping my boards, um, and, and I have a shop in town, which is great. So I've, I've I've actually pulled out the biscuit mill out of having a space there. Yeah, Elf, yeah. Alpha long boards. Yeah. Um, Alpha Skates, um, am I correct? Yeah, my shop is called Alpha Skates. My company is Alpha Longboards, yeah. There we go. I've got those, both those bases covered. Well done. Um, but let's rewind. Well, let's go and rest on your laurels. Growing up as a kid, um, were you in the District 6 area? Is that where you were born and bred? No, I'm actually from uh, Mitchell's Plain, the Cape Flats. Um, that's, I mean, I was turning to Johnny earlier and he was saying they moved all the time. And I mean, same with me. I went to about seven different schools growing up, just because, you know, on, like around the Cape Flats. So sometimes people joke, like close friends say, Kenji, you mustn't say you're from Cape, I mean, from Mitchell's Plain. Because I always credit <laughs> Mitchell's Plain in my interviews and stuff. They like to say you from the Cape Flats, because, you know, because I did, I, I moved around quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, so from Mitchell's Plain. Um, yeah, moved around a lot, lived in Atlantis, out on the West Coast. Um, I actually started skating in Hanover Park. Um, when I was living with, with my grandmother for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was 13, started skateboarding there. And yeah, no, so it was great. And then living in Woodstock for a while, and that's just sort of downhill skateboarding up in Mountain Road. I just skate past, I, would, I drive past the house where I started downhill skateboarding mm -hmm. um, regularly because I live close by. So yeah, I mean, so it's, it's, it's more Cape Flats than anything else. Yeah. Why skate? And, 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 and sorry, and then you said District 6, and I. I I make sure I skate in District 6, mainly because my family's from there, because they were displaced there during group areas. So that's why it's important for me to skate, to express my freedom when my family's freedom was taken away. You know, that's how I see it. Yeah. Brilliant. So why skateboarding? What was the draw card for you as a, as a youngster? You know, I mean, because we, we moved around a lot, which meant I didn't have friends. You know, like many people have circles of friends that they grew up with. I don't. It was just, you know... Um, 
and skateboarding. And I always joke that I can't remember the person I was before skateboarding. I can't remember the, the kid. You know, like I can remember little bits of it, but I can't remember the person, the personality. You know, I feel like I was just a meatball that made sound. <laughs> <laughs> a, a meatball that it made sounds. sounds. It's a great terminology. Yeah, <laughs> just a nugget. Yeah, exactly. Um, but did it keep you out of trouble? I mean, I mean, you grew up in some pretty sketchy yeah, areas. Definitely, you know. I mean, because well, I mean, you know, because people always ask me, so didn't you get, you know, like drawn into the gangs or this kind of stuff? I never stayed in a place long enough to get drawn into these kind of, you know, um, fraternities. Um, anyway, so when I started skateboarding, so when I picked up a skateboarding, I always call it like a transformer moment. It just made sense mm. completely. You know, like it just became one with me. Um, and also growing up, we are growing up without much money. You know, I always say skateboards and bicycles and these kind of things always offer freedom to a kid on the Cape Flats because we don't always have taxi fee or bus fare. So now we could explore. We weren't just in our poor street range. And now we could explore. So, like, I would skate to Claremont. Or I would skate sometimes even to Mitchell's playing from Hanover Park, you know? Through That's Philippines. a distance, eh? Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, we just, we just keep it. We just, cool, I want to skate. Um, so, yeah, so that's how it all started, and that's how it made sense. And then from at that point on, I knew this is me for the rest of my life. There was no other thing I wanted to do. I was like, skateboard, skateboard. Yeah. It made sense. Yeah, and mm. what what age are we talking when you started? Thirteen, and then on my fourteenth birthday, my cousin that also lived by my grandmother, he he skated, and then he had some, and then I Frankenstein one of his his old boards, a Pal Peralta, mm. that's I'm a big Pal Peralta lifer. Um, and then yeah, and then he said, okay, cool, yeah, it's yours. That's always credited my fourteenth birthday as my day that I officially became a skateboarder. So you're a Pal Peralta fan. You so you're a Zephyr fan. Yeah, pretty you're much. Not a, you're not a Dogtown boy fan. No, no, definitely. I mean, like you have to give. I mean, out of Dogtown came Stacy, you know, Stacy Peralta. So. Well, there we go. But I mean, that was he was on the Zephyr team, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was a Zephyr. I mean, so then obviously then he went on to start Pal Peralta afterwards. Um, no, no. I mean, I I love everything about skateboarding from them. You know, like I understand the attitude, um, and. Crazy though, because Stacey Peralta also, he, he started working on a documentary about uh, drawing the parallels between black kids skateboarding in inner cities and to how it's the same feeling and the same reasoning as to why they started skateboarding. Because where they were from wasn't the affluent area. You know? mm. So it's the same reason why they started skateboarding. And that's why it really attracts an urban mindset. You know? um, so yeah, no, so I'm a, I'm a life I, I see. So because I've got a big tattoo here of the the, the, the bones, the, the bones yeah, brigade. Yeah, yeah. May Kim take his t-shirt off, please. <laughs> yes, can we? Can we? Can we see it, please? Yeah. For the camera, there we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Gnarly. Well, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's my skateboarding. If if you could pass on a message to Tony Elva and to Stacy Peralta, let's say they were sitting here, um, and I'm going to add context to this in a second. What would you What would you say to them if you had one thing to say or ask them? Instinctively, I would just say thank you, you know, um, and thank you. In this, in this, in saying it now is not just two words. It's thank you for life. It's thank you for everything. It's thank you for for doing what you're doing, and thank you for still doing what you're doing. You know, thank you for being the voice of a people. Um, you know, a very good friend of mine, and we never met face to face, just on social media, and then I wrote for Cryptonics. Um, luckily for me, um, when they relaunched, and um, and he was actually Jack Smith, and he was actually at the 1975 Del Mar contest, so he saw it live, um, and he was actually in the movie Dark Down and Z Boys. They actually gave him a cameo as the contest organizer, um, and he ran the the skate museum in California. Um, you know, so for me to have that kind of one degree of separation. Guys like Stacy, who I've got a signed magazine. He was on Skateboarder magazine on the cover, and he signed one and sent it down to me to Kent. You know, so anyway, so all that, and just for me, like I find my, like I've got a bigger affinity to that era of skateboarding than what I do to, to this one. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's the same, but um, yeah, but I, I, I see why they done it, and I feel I done it because 
you know, for the reasons why they done it. You know. Amazing. The reason why I say that is because in three weeks from now, I'm going to be sitting down with uh, Tony Elva, Stephen Duran, and possibly even Stacey Peralta. And um, I, want, you. I want to... Um, <laughs> Take the, I want to take that little snippet and play it to them when I get there and sit down and <laughs> chat to them. It's uh, No, yeah. it's just, I mean, yeah. It's going to be a privilege you know, to meet them, you know, and childhood heroes, you know. Skateboarding is alive, you know, so, yeah. Anyway. So, um, now I'm going to ask you guys. <laughs> what's that? So, Johnny. No, that, that's so half was deep. <laughs> I've yeah. got nothing that can rival that. Well, it, this isn't... <laughs> okay. So you, Competition, Johnny. Yeah, you, you ah, see, okay, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the athlete, the, exactly. the, the athlete I'm coming out. I'm just going to drink my drink. Uh, <laughs> good. So what's a Zen moment in Iraq, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, what's a Zen moment? What's I it like? I need to get out of here. That's, like, that's the only moment. Like, how do I get out of this and back to my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Alive, without yeah. a broken rib. <laughs> a sweaty, big beast on top of you. It's like, I need to get out of this. And then you're like... I had the milk this morning. Yeah. <laughs> what position did you play? Funny enough, the fort you have on the bottom of Iraq, not always like, you're not always there. Like you are somewhere else. Just try and make it go away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what position did you play? I was in the front row. I was loose head. Oh, wow. Loose head prop. Yeah, like I've lost 30 kg now. So. Okay, so you were a bigger boy. Yeah, I was, I was chunky. Chunky, chunky lad. Um, if you could describe for us the smell in the scrum of... Uh, I should imagine like a, a load of smelly bits and bobs and 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 things going on there. Yeah, what, look, how would you describe like that, that nice fresh mint spray you sprayed there? Like, yes, it was totally different. Is well, it, yeah, but yeah. it's not like a lot of DP. You don't just <laughs> smell DP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? And, yeah. Uh, no, that that is a, it's funny. You should mention that. That is the one thing like you miss. You go in the change room before and you're like, hey, guys, it's like they're ready to go. It's like caged animals, and the smell that you like. You smell is like a deep heat liniment smell and you go in there, you're like, yeah, I want, I want it too. You're like, okay, you go in there, chill, like, you know, you know, it's chill music on, stay calm, it's not ready to fight yet. But uh, then you smell the liniment, you're like, okay, I'm good, I'm, good. I'm ready to yeah, go. Yeah. It's like it's like the, the smell of that, the... of battle, it's like, I'm good. And then now, like, someone's got a bad back on the beach and they put liniment on, you're like, where is it? I'm ready. <laughs> oh, like, really? Go yeah? tackle them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but it just, that bring, it just brings back the changing rooms. It's tape amazing. on the floor, the liniment. Liniment? Yeah. What is that? It's, oh, it's like the deep heat. Oh, that deep heat smell. Okay. Yeah. You so guys. you described it, yeah. you know? Yeah, but yeah. I know it because my dad played a professional football. Yeah. Um, he actually played for, he represented South Africa in some some smaller tournaments, yeah. like nationally. Um, so I kind of grew up at Hartley Vale. Oh, right. You know, like on weekends. Yes. Because that's where the, the coloured league played. Okay. So that's where they kind of played. Anyway, so that's what I know. No. Well, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, like, the players, I would have, like, thrown everyone off and maybe, like, sprayed myself with something, like, some nice cologne yeah. or ladies something. Perfume or You're something, like a lady's yeah. perfume. Did they ever do something like that? No, but that, that should have been it. Like, yeah, that would have just changed the game. In, well, right. exactly. Actually, I've got a question. I what think. what conversations happen in the rack? No. Like, what's that to say? <laughs> <laughs> it you depends know. who's next to you. Like, depends if you hate each other. Uh, like, no. Nah. To be honest, it's mostly like, you, you can like, just try and knock seven bells of shit out of each other. Yeah. And then like, you can literally look at each other and you just have that moment where you just go like, yeah, we, we're doing the same thing, but I want to continue trying to get you. And it's like, like you see in rugby now, like the guys smash the hell out of each other. And then it's just like, they're laughing about it. Like even... Not so much now, you, the punch-ups, and then afterwards you're having a beer and it's like, oh, nice yeah. shot, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you got yeah. me good. Yeah. It is like literally like that. And if it's your mate on the floor on the other team and you're probably trying to like give him a little shot yeah. or just a little nip, just something Dark to, to niggle him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to make a lot him. of banter. A lot, lot, lot of banter. A yeah. lot of foul language happening in there. Yeah, you've got to have thick skin, hey? Okay. Do they, <laughs> what do they, do they like rip off your family and that? Ah, uh, not so much family. I think there's a there's a boundary. Okay. Um, generally, just you. Any features that might stick out, you'll get into. You got to. It teaches you good. Like you got to have thick skin. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like a rugby environment, day to day, and the training and the thing. Like it's literally just nonstop banter, yeah. and it's and it's like from the like the coaches we used to have in Newcastle, like this old policeman who had his leg shot off. 
he walked around and his name was Bob Morton. He was hard as nails. He's like an old notorious like guy. Around. He was a policeman. And the first day I rocked up, I signed for Newcastle. He's like, what are you doing here? Like, what are you doing here? And Jordan, I'm like, what do you, I'm here to train. I'm like, coach, he's like, you're not good enough. I'm like, oh, but, but I am. No, you're not. Get out. And I was like, well, no, I'll just keep my head down and train. By the second week, I was like, he's like, what are you doing here? I was like, Bob, shut up, man. Like, you know what I mean? And he's like, well, that's it, lad. He's just, just constantly testing you. Okay. He's seeing if you can have that resilience, you know? And that's a, it's a very much like, I guess the only thing you can relate it to is like an army or like a, you've got to be like, you've got to be ready for it. Mm. And then the senior players, they're knocking on the young ones to keep them in line. The coaches are, it, it says, that environment it prepares you well for life, I think. Yeah, I think it's a, a case of um, it's you've got to be mentally as strong as you are physically. Yeah. And I think growing up in the areas that you did, um, there's parallels between how you had to, from a very young age, and I think a lot of um, kids who've grown up, I mean, I grew up in a, a government council estate, you know, and you have to deal with things going on around you, despite, you know, you, you're not being involved with gangsterism or anything like that. You've got things happening around that kids growing up in normal neighborhoods don't see and don't hear and don't have to deal with psychologically. Mm. And skateboarding, you know, while this is all happening around you, skateboarding is, is the bit that grounds you and keeps you like sane. Yeah. But you're still, you're still being like, a, you know, subject to this. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that makes you tougher at a younger age. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think it's, um, if you can kind of transfer a lot of the lessons, you, you know, I mean, like it's definitely made me a better skateboarder. Like um, when I used to compete um, around the world and stuff, and, and also just locally as a downhill skateboarder, people used to laugh at me. I can't, like, why do you push so fast? Because I used to push like really well, like that, that. And I'm like, listen here, if there's, Ten gangsters chasing you in the end of a park, <laughs> and they're wielding <laughs> knives at you, and they're gonna rob you, you know, just for the hell of it. You gotta you send it. Yeah. So like that's your thing. So like I'm like okay, cool. I'm gonna go from here, from the terminus. I'm gonna go to Cowboy Town. <laughs> so I need to now figure out that route. And somewhere along the way, someone's gonna try to chase you. You know. And really? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like it's yeah. It's either that or, the, or like there's a pit bull on a leash that they let go, and then now you must chase from that also. You laugh, but it's like real. Hey? You know, it's that's a crazy, thing. Though. Like it's not even yeah. you know. And, and, and I'm like. Guys, that's the reality. And they're like, ha, ah, are you joking? I'm like, no, I'm not joking. <laughs> I've had a Rottweiler chase me on, with a skateboard, and it's a scary feeling. Eh? Dude. And uh, it's, it's right there, and you can, you can almost smell the thing. Dude, you know, like I was walking, because I walk my dog in the dog park, and you know, so nowadays you get these dog people. You know? So sometimes you, you can see these people at the dog park, and like I was, once again, I was joking with my wife. I was saying, you know, like people don't realize. So then after a while, like when dogs chase you, you stop skateboarding. You turn and you face them and you start timing them. And like, there's been a few cases where you kind of have to like time a kick like, <laughs> to the face, like to the side. You know, and I'm like, it's not even a joke. I mean, because many people from the Cape Flats would just throw, or like you use your board and you like, time it. Just get them on the side of the jaw and you're like, okay. Yeah, you've got yeah. to like physically yeah, you know, defend yourself. Thing. So you kind of, okay, cool. I'm not going to get away from this. I'm going to, anyway. You're going to clap that thing. So, I mean, but now on that, you know, so like as I said, it's maybe a bit of skateboarder and just kind of using that same lessons of, of survival. Um, and in a way, it makes you, it makes you tough and resilient, and also stubborn. You know, and, and stubbornness is what you need in skateboarding. Have you, can you tell me, like, were you nearly shot once, or were you nearly stabbed a few times, or mm, was? Well, I don't know. Like, I never stayed uh, around to. Kind yeah, of. yeah, yeah. Like, I was never in the situation long enough for someone to. I mean, it happened once. I was skating on my hill, and my wife says I was stupid for doing this, and I'm sure all your listeners. You guys who think I'm stupid. Like three guys trying to taxi pulls up to me, District Six actually. And I'm busy talking on the phone and, and I normally go skate alone because I skate alone. And I'm busy sliding on my hill. Taxi pulls up. And, and so like my boots open so they think I'm I'm stuck on the side of the road. So I'm like, now nah, I'm on the phone, so I'm talking to a, a friend on the phone and he's busy chapping. And one guy gets out. And he's like, Yo, are you stuck? And I'm like, nah, I'm just loving you talking on the phone. What do you want? And he's like, give me your phone. So like, I've got my GoPro and my helmet, and I have the phone. And I'm like, nah, leave my, no, I'm not going to give you my thing. Anyway, so a, a second guy gets out, you know. It's like, it's a gachi, then there's another guy. 
Yo, give me the phone. And then the two of them start like, like pulling at my phone. I'm like, no, I'm not going to give him my phone. And like the guy shows me his gun. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to give you the phone. And it, it, it's just one of those things. And I mean, you know, like I'm not trying to glamorize it. I'm not. No, I'm no, just, no, no. Yeah, you know, like I was not here at the time. But I always, but I also say that, you know, like growing up in these areas, you can see in someone's eye. You know, I mean, like that's my thing. You know, like you learn to, you learn to size people up very quickly where you're from because it's, it's make or break. Hmm. And he showed me his gun and pulled out his gun and, and he was like, yo, give me the phone or I'm going to. And like I should have just given him the phone. But it's damn fun. Um, and then he starts hitting me on the back of the head with the butt of the gun. And then, like, I'm still not letting go. The driver of the taxi gets out. Three of them just start. Da, 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 da. Anyway, so, like, eventually they get it and, like, they rip up my cam and stuff. But it's like, I mean, so I wouldn't say it was a, it's a drama story. But I mean, I don't know. It's the one story I have. <laughs> You know, that's like being in a yeah, in well. a serious uh, rock and roll situation. Oh, let's not compare that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of on the back. Yeah, of the yeah, head. it's crazy. Yeah, man. sure. But cool. anyway, so um, it's not a not a drama, kind of overcoming adversity story, but it's a story. <laughs> but I'm interested to okay. talk about skate spaces in and around Cape Town and the fact that I don't believe we've got enough of those spaces, and that's been a long time problem, right, Kent? We have enough spaces of it, but a lot of them are not adequate spaces. Okay. So you're saying we do have enough skate parks? No, I mean, no, no, completely. Uh, we do? Yeah. I mean, okay. I, you know. How many skate parks do we have in Cape Town? Do you know? I mean, I, I, probably, people can probably bash me for this because I'm not going to name all of them. But for example, so we've got the Shred, the indoor skate park. In the city centre, we've got, uh, well, I call Battery Park in the city centre. It's in the waterfront. Then we've got Mill Street Skate Park. Then we've got City But Bowl these Park. are privatized things. I'm talking about like no, 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 funded no. by the, the city of Cape Town. Oh, um, I don't know. There are a few ones, you know, like come election time, they're always kind of dumping concrete somewhere and building weird little um, things. Yeah, like the one down the road, yeah, that's like a little bowl. So that thing, I mean, I, I took my daughter there the other day and even she is like, I ah, know, daddy, this, this, this curve, this curve, you know, the transition. Yes, just, yeah, transition is weird there. Thing, bro. Um, no, and Pelican Park just got one now. Um, there's one in Stranford and it's been there forever. Mitchell's Plain has one. You know, so there's, I'm not saying that we should be fine with what we have, but there's enough. Mm. Yeah, but there's enough parks. Johnny's looking at you like, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. And he's like, because Johnny's got one in his backyard. I was just going to say, and then there's this bowling world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Johnny's like skated. got his own skate park. Yeah. No, I mean, so I feel... And then Hout Bay's got an amazing one. That's my favorite one. Oh, yes. You I know? mean, the IY is just... And that place, the, sorry to jump in here, yeah. but like the amount of cool little rippers coming out of so IY completely. in Mizama Yetu who are on that in that park is just testimony to the fact that yeah. what a great outlet for kids, you know? You know, so until the skate... I mean, I'm not always a, a supporter of skate parks because I, I come from street skateboarding. So I always like people to skate street. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want them to go skate. I want them. I want kids. I want to see kids popping stairs or doing rails in the city center. But we can only say that we don't have enough parks until all these parks are always full with kids. They're not. Mm, that's a problem. Yeah, you know. So well, I'd say IY is a probably the the on the weekends. It's the it's the fullest, right? Yeah, I mean IY is in a is in a special place because it's in the it connects three communities. You know, so all those three communities, kids are going to end up. So that's why that's in a very special place. I think it's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I personally think that there's enough box. I personally think. Okay. That. And like, I think that it's spread out enough for people to get this box. Yeah. Okay. Enough said on that subject. And I mean, because Athlone's got Nantes skate park also. I mean, like, these aren't all great skate parks, but it's something. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's talk about Johnny's new life. <laughs> You've been baptized into the world of surfing and... South African lifestyle. Why did you choose South Africa, Johnny? What was your affinity with this part of the world? Well, firstly, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. Um, and uh, my wife and children and I all love it. Um, but there was a reason why we came here initially. Um, we had a, a family business, which was a health food company, um, which sold a lot of dried fruit. So we used to come over, it's towards Mal Malmesbury Way, that way, Cowder area. Mm -hmm. um, the supplier was there. So we used to come over and visit a lot. And I think um, my sister also married a South African cricketer who was over here. And there was a, there was a tie there with South Africa. We, who is he? Yeah, who is he? He's Andrew Gate. 
he used to play. Um, oh, I'm terrible with cricket. You'll kill me for saying this. But he used to play. He went uh, went over to play in Derbyshire. Okay. He played for the SA. Um, I think he might have played for South African second team, but he was a good batsman. Um, yeah. So we'd always come over, and his, you know, his family and 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 Haley, my my sister, and him got married here. Um, so yeah, we'd come over and we just fell in love with it. Like the the, the life, the, the outdoor, the outdoorness, the rawness of the area. It's got like these mountains that hug the coast. It's like, yeah, you just can't get bored. It's like the best nature's playground ever. I mean, I know South Africa has its issues. Everyone has issues and it has some pretty big ones, but geez, it's got so much going for it. Like it's an amazing country, like an amazing country. Uh, so yeah, we just fell in love, and then I, I was saying to um, yeah before that we uh, we basically we brought the kids over for two years just to give them a change. You know, the English winters are are pretty rough. I mean, you you go to school at eight o'clock in the morning, it's dark. You come home at three thirty, it's dark. In like you know, in the winter, kids are getting like just so pale looking. You're like, geez, like I might actually have to put you on a sunbed. Like soon I can see straight through you. It's like we need some sun. So you're like, right, two weeks, we're going to go for a holiday for two weeks and then we're going to get all our vitamin D in that, those two weeks. And yes. It doesn't work like that. So then, we're like, right, that's, after we, the business was sold and rugby was finished, I was like, we, we're not tied to an area. Let's try somewhere. So we're like, well, we know Cape Town is good. So we, we came over here and the rest is history, really. I can't take them away from this. Not that I want to because I also, we love it. Um, but the kids come home and they ditch a school bag and they grab their surfboard and they're in the water like for eight hours or whatever, you know. They don't, they're, they're pretty much just like living the dream. Beautiful. So you can't you can't pull that rug from under their feet. Uh, but yeah, not that we're going to either. Um, the biggest kid needs to play too. <laughs> I noticed you've got an anchor tattooed on your arm under there. Yeah. It's a little... A little telltale sign to the narrative that we're about to slide into. And then on his combi outside, it's got the word ahoy. How is that yours? Yeah. You parked over there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah cool. The one that you tagged, bro. <laughs> Sorry about you. That's a stupid number. Yeah. Did you grind it with your skateboard? Or what, did you, what did you change the ahoy to? No, we didn't. We're not onto that. Let's have a look at some oh, of yours. So ahoy is this company of yours, eh? Yeah. While I get, while I get some of your gear... Tell us about it. A little introduction. Um, so yeah, Ahoy is just basically born from doing what we love. So basically the Ahoy is a brand we've just recently set up. It's very young. Um, but it is just, you know, what we are as people. So like the Ahoy, the Ahoy mentality is you get up and you go in the morning, you know, good decisions, you know, shape your day. So it's like, are we going to go run? Ahoy, let's go. Are we going to go in the go. ocean? Ahoy, let's go. It's like, so... If I could describe what it is, it's ocean and mountain, basically. You know, we, we run in the mountains, we run on the beach, we surf in the ocean, we swim in the ocean, we fish. It's just that, that Ahoy lifestyle that we live, so it's super easy to bring into a brand. Mm. And it stops me from getting too old too quickly, so I have to keep busy. <laughs> nice. I think the, it's a cool name, eh? Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Another little flask, Ahoy flask there. Thank you very we'll much. We'll leave all the links down below to... The Ahoy online. Thank you very much. You know, much. all the all the, the Instagrams, the socials, the website. Little, is that a little magnet thing at the bottom? That, no, no, I just I think it's oh, okay. it looks like the way they cap it, but uh, yeah, those we'll are pretty put it next rad, to my, I mean. I'm not plastic one here. <laughs> and get a little bit of extra exposure for Ahoy. <laughs> and I say you've gone back to the retro sort of like bright pinks and blues and yeah. a bit of skeletons going on there, which is quite lacquer. A little bit of salty character in there. Salty and stoked. Has this been like a childhood dream to have like a surf brand of yours? <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily I, call it... I like it the caps, by the way. A little bit nice of, and spicy for bit you. Of zebra. Yeah, I love yeah. a bit of animal print yeah. in my life. <laughs> your colorway. Ooh, it is my, my colorway. Those shoes of yours, yeah. they would go well. Hey? Very cool. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. No, no, sweet. So I guess um, so. I wouldn't like describe it as a surf brand. We're most like an ocean um, outdoor brand, like a movement brand. So we, we think like if you don't get up and move in the day... It's like water. If a pond, water doesn't move, it stinks, it gets rotten. You start to smell the place. I think that as a person, my mentality, if you sit around all day watching TV, get up late, you start getting like grumpy, and you start getting bad, you start to stink up the place. So just move. Ahoy, let's go. Like that's where we're trying to go with it. So it's not 
necessarily surf brand, even though we are as people, and a lot of our friends in the brand are surfers or you know mountaineers or whatever. But it's just it's more of a it's more just a get up and go and movement. Like, yeah, but it's based around the ocean because we love it. We and live, smell. Smell, smell the You're salt. like you stink because you've just been sat there. Yeah. Mm. Um, what's it? I heard something the other day where, what, what? Where did I hear it? Like if you sit down for too long, your pants start to wear out or something like that. There's a saying. True, but, right? but it's interesting how we were talking about smell in the scrum and now he's. He's using this metaphor of stinky water. <laughs> Don't get away from it here. It's funny, as a, as a parent, I'm always shouting at my teenage daughter, you're going to get bed sores, get out of bed, you're going to get bed sores, you're yeah, like, yeah. laying too long. Yeah. I mean, she's not going to, but yeah, the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's true though, hey, like... We, just move, man, just yeah. move, yeah. Like, uh, I'm sure Kent would agree, like, if he doesn't get his release, like, like I'm, you mentioned before about growing up, the skating, like, that was your probably release from all the drama and the bullshit in life, and like, everyone has their thing... Like what makes you tick? Yeah. Well, that's like my thing, like what makes you tick? For me, I can't operate. I can't go down and design or I can't do anything unless I've literally like ran in the morning or been in the, I just need it. Like it's, it's, it's part of like your DNA, who you are. Like if I don't, like my wife knows, she's like, Johnny, just go. Yeah. Just, just go and do something, get out the house. Like, okay, yeah, I'll take myself for a walk. You're starting like, to stink. Yeah, you, I, you stink. And like, yeah, I do. Like, I can smell it. Yeah. Need to go. Like, even if it's just like some lazy on the computer, which happens, it's real life. I'll just break it up. So every hour, I just go walk for half an hour. Just, even though you're cutting out work time, that time is not productive if I don't move. So like that, if, if I was to sum up a hoy, that is a hoy. So a hoy is just move. Whatever it is that makes you tick, like that is it. So ocean, mountains, that's it. I hope we get that across right because that's the next thing like but we just being who we are with the brand so if it comes across then that that's great for us is it in any way <laughs> uh, is there any sort of a, a conservancy side to this like are all the the materials eco friendly and 100 percent african cotton and all that jazz like that is a big thing as people that we we, we really trying to strive for and and look we're not perfect i'm not sitting here yet like i'm an angel like we don't use anything like we, like, it's a little things for me, like we drop the boxes in cardboard box. You know, we're trying to reduce any plastics. Like I was talking to about retail for the t-shirts. People are like, well, we need it in plastic bags when it's delivered to the shop to stop the dirt. I'm like, well, I don't want to go retail then. So I don't want to like, if you look at how the t-shirt's packed in there, it's in a little wind, but the, you know, so we have to, as people like try and help reduce, like to say I'm perfect is not. We the caps are used. We we have to buy and recycle. So basically, some caps we use is taking plastic out the ocean. They mm -hmm. fish it out, which is helping big. And other the plastic we we just actually buy uh, recycled polyester. So you, your waste bottles that go to the landfill or whatever for the recycle centers, they melt that down, they pelletize it, and then they put it into remaking. So then we buy the rolls of recycled polyester. So the quick dry caps, these work for fashion and, um, sorry, this is not a sales pitch, but um, this is like for fashion and every day they're quick dry. Quick dry caps need to be polyester and nylon. Otherwise cotton takes a long time, as you know. So like for us to bring in a polyester quick dry cap, would just bring more plastic into the world if, we, if, it, if it was virgin plastic. We try to use stuff already without creating more needs. So that's basically what we're trying to do. And then anything as a brand is not to create unnecessary use of stuff. And then the biggest thing for us is to try and use Africa. Like, so there's so many people who are talented here and need work, but we can't use everything for Africa. Like the water bottles aren't made in Africa. I tried, I searched, I scoured. It does not happen. I cannot compete. And then if I was to ever, which we couldn't, the end price, no one would buy it anyway. So it'd be a waste. So like so, some things like, and I need to like, I need years to try and do, but some things we can do right now. But it's just minimizing our impact as individuals. And then as a family, we do that as well. So we don't like jump in the car to go. So if we can walk there, people know us as the crazy people around coming. You walk everywhere. Like I know you, but I don't know you, but oh, I see you walking everywhere. It's like we don't jump in the car, you know, unless we have to. You know? That's like little things. You can jump on a Alpha longboard. Yeah, well, I wish I could. <laughs> well, Someone dropped me one. None that, none that you've met. I'm <laughs> sure that, that they. 
I'm yeah. sure that there'll be some sort of trade oh, well, exchange. I'm not sure I'll be as fast as you, though. But, uh, I might have to give you one in the house just to console you after the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll need I'm one joking. with a score on the bottom of it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You take a yeah. picture of all of us here together yeah, and put it on the bottom. That'll yeah. be a memento board. That'll be right. That'll be cool. I'll cool. make a T-shirt for that for us. Okay. okay. There we go. We'll we'll commemorate this. Um, listen, um, in order to win the prizes from the sponsors, you've got to you've got to try some chili sauce. Is that right? Ah, oh, so I like give it all to I give it all to uh, Ken's not yeah. keen. Ken's You're trying not to keen. be all subtle that I've had my <laughs> lunch and now you tell us it's a game. <laughs> That's John, it's all yours. You can yeah. it. Well, you like get some to win Japanese yeah. game show. You get to win prizes if you try some of the chili sauce. Yeah. Uh, Come on, Kent, man. You can swing some Namuti oh, afterwards. Johnny, okay, Johnny's going to do it. I'll do it, first. but like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Cheers, Kent. No disclaimers. This is like the world's hottest sauce or something. It feels like it. I feel like there's lumps of like solid chili in there. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. See what you're doing here, Steve. This is how you're going to shut me up. Shred the nort sauce. Yeah, look what you're going to get. Okay. Okay. You know what's going on here. Yeah, look at him. Look at his face. He's like, oh, my God. You animal. How's that, Johnny? A little bit spicy. Is that good? good. Not bad. It'll come, I'm sure, but it's not right now. It's, yeah, it's going to come tomorrow well. morning. You're going to have to shower <laughs> upside down, bro. Well, I've got some toilet roll, hopefully. <laughs> Johnny has just won a wealth uh, of prizes. He's won toilet hair, paper. Sorry. He's won with Zoogles. He's won a flask. He's won the Mooty. It's actually okay. quite mild, Steve, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Okay, come, you cheeky, one, cheeky give man. Me one, yeah. Pour me one, then. I thought for such a spicy dresser, you might have some spicy sauce. No, are you sure? No, mate, it's not honest. <laughs> Do you yeah. like a little bit of heat on your food or not? Yeah, why does it feel like it's a lot more than Johnny's? Ken's got this. Not there. Eh? Not there. Eh? No. None at all. Not spicy. I'm gonna have to turn up the heat, boys. There's two animals in here. Is that, hey. your, uh, is that your strongest one? No, no, it's not the strongest. Hey, you one. heard him chirping now. He's, uh, <laughs> oh, you go first, Johnny. No, just, is that all you've got? Like, are you <laughs> not entertained? No, like, yeah. uh, <laughs> Easy, Kent. <laughs> Johnny, try another. Uh, I love it. Okay, well done, boys. You've won a beautiful hamper from my illustrious sponsors. Yes. Enjoy it. Your bum is having gonna be a drink happy. There, are we? Yes, having a little. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, he's, it's funny because I had some chili poppers on Friday night with some friends. Yeah. Anyway. Kent, let's talk about your relationship uh, with your daughter and the fact that you're teaching her to skate from a very young age, I understand. Yeah, you know, it's... Um, I mean, we had a whole chat about parenting. And like, for others, you can't stop them. Yeah, like, I just start opening up the can of words. Um, yeah, no, it, it's... You know, the thing is... Sometimes I feel a bit bad because I feel like it's something that I impose on her. But I think she just sees how much I love it. And she just wants to do it. Um, yeah, so we skate. I mean, yesterday after school. I mean, <laughs> I, I moved my workshop now to the Shred Indoor Skate Park in Ponna. Oh, is that where it is now? Yeah, really? so I've got a little hole in the wall there. Like so, so, so you service boards and... Yeah, I mean, so I make this. I've got the shop in town. But, you know, so I go pick up a school and I'm like, oh, I'll bet daddy must go do some more work at the workshop. And then while I'm busy shaping boards, she's busy skating at the skateboard. You know, which is cool. Um, I mean, yeah, so she started skateboarding. I mean, she's, she's always at a board. But she really got into it. Kind of downhill. So we would start doing single hill maybe like two or three years ago. She did like 60, 65 k's an hour. Oh. Going down single hill with me holding my hand. 65 k's an hour? Yeah. At what so age? Wow. Six years old and doing bombing down Signal Hill at 65. Yeah, I know. That's really cool character building, building isn't it? But it's, it, it, it's crazy, though, because, like, you have to talk to them the whole time while they're doing it. Because, like, you mustn't let them focus on, like, yeah. the insanity that's happening. Just be like, look at me. Are you all right? Oh, I'm Lucy Goose, your arms. Remember the Lion King? <laughs> you know, it's like getting wobbles. 
<laughs> no, I mean, so it's great. It's, it's... Meanwhile, you're more scared than they are, like, inside. Because yeah, yeah, it's them. Yeah, you don't well, mind taking a tumble. I'm scared of the mother. of like, what's yeah. going to happen here, yeah, you know? <laughs> what's mom going to say? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. No, no, she's just given up. Yeah, like a mother's. So like, you live your life vicariously through your child. Because, well, but, but it's in a loving way. And it's, it's such a great... You know, Steve, actually not. I was thinking about that because nowadays, because we do jujitsu and these kind of things as well, and nowadays with skateboarding being the Olympics, I see a lot of these kind of soccer mom style parents in skateboarding. You know, um, and somebody asked me, "Oh, like, are you trying to live through your daughter?" And I'm like, "No, nah, I've achieved everything I've achieved in skateboarding on my own, anyways." You know, um, so it's not that I'm living vicariously through her. It's just I know what skateboarding can do. I know, like, I've seen it change lives. I've seen it save lives. Mm. She's not at all in the same position I was when I started skateboarding, the guys that I started skateboarding with. Um, but, yeah, but also just being a girl dad, you know, like, it's so nice being at the point in this world where girls can do anything boys can do. You know? um, exactly. And for me, like, a big thing is, and, and like, I love watching female alternative sports. Okay. Well, I call it alternative sports because in my mind, because that's what you grew up with, like it wasn't mainstream. Um, so I love the fact that we do that together, and she loves it completely. You know, um, street skateboarding. Like yesterday after school, we had an half an hour to kill, and we went to Battery Park to go skate because the skateboard's always in my car. And she loves it and she enjoys it, but I don't push her to do it. You know, I mean, it's it's like if you want to do it, you want to do it, and like I always say, I'm gonna froth as much as I can on the fact that she wants to do it now. Two years time, she might be like, ah, that was cool, but uh, it's not really my thing. And then I'll be like, okay, cool. You but know? girls are super style, yeah. They have so much style. Dude, that's the thing, though. And like I always say, and uh, I remember when I started competing down, you'll, you know, females listen to their body. Yeah. Men, like males, are always trying to like force a situation. You know, like they watch a YouTube video, yeah. and like, this is how I must look. Their flow, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Whereas girls just kind of go, what do you want to put this I'm listening to my body, man. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got problems with that. Without a Come on, um, man. What are you trying to say? You know, and so I like good. fresh spray. Yeah, like yeah exactly. Um, no, I mean, so that's why. I mean, I love the fact that she does it. I love the fact that we do it together. Um, and yeah, and that is something that I can share with my child. You know, I mean, for me, the greatest title anybody can ever call me is, is dad. You know, I mean, I'm very... It's funny because I took it to this, to this photo shoot thing. So we went in and she was one of the main characters in the ad and she was skating in this big clothing label ad. And then the lunch came and on, the, and on my lunch packet said, Albert's dad. Father of. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah. yeah, so I'm not Kent anymore. I'm not Brilliant. Albert's dad. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I am. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. So, and, and like, I just love the fact that she's active, you know? And it builds character and she loves it. And she's had big falls and I see her move around the skate park and take up space. And she's always snaking like the bigger guys. And I'm like, sorry, man, she didn't know. She doesn't understand. She I mean, can get away with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, because like she's skating in a, in a dress and she's looking all cute. Yeah, and I'm just like, yeah, so just go. No, I love it. Yeah. Is her inspiration Sky Brown? She watches a lot of it. Um, she doesn't know it yet. I mean, it's... <laughs> She doesn't know who her inspiration is right now. You know, like we go to skate comps and I'm like, oh, like, yeah, like, watch this. And she's like, nah, I'm going to go skating. Like, while the comps happening, she's busy skating. And I'm like, I'm going to watch this girl. She's like, no. Nah. No, I'm going to go. Yeah, like, I want to feel it rather than watch That's it. That's quite good, though, because they develop their own style rather than exactly. trying to see others. Yeah, exactly. Like. You know, and I mean, yeah. I mean, so she does, so like, she does compete so and so sometimes. And sometimes I must stop myself from being like an overly competitive dad. Um, yeah, like, my, like my wife has said, like even like with jiu jitsu, like I'm the guy on the sideline, <laughs> silently talking, you know, knowing that the other kids' parents are right behind me, so I purposely say things. <laughs> 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 you know that, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, You're that so, guy. Yeah, on... I'm that guy. But now I'm having to turn it back because also I don't want her to, to, yeah, like I don't to stop her enjoyment of it. Yeah. Cool. That's amazing. Yeah, it's so rad to see the young girls. I mean, I've got Melissa coming on tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I've got old Susie Snakes. Yeah, no, she's a, she's a, I mean, what she does with Skate Smiles Club, I mean, the, her World Girls Skate Night at the Shred is what's gotten my, has gotten Alba really into street skateboarding, you know, which is great. 
Yeah, it's, it's amazing. That girl skate night is just it, such a great thing for the watching, community, right? Just girls skateboarding. And like for younger girls, it's cool because, you know, and I mean, also like I like these kind of things where girls understand, like, you know, like if the older girls are going through stuff and the, the older girls are kind of, you know, if girls are going through different things and guys don't understand. It. Also, I like, I like it when my daughter doesn't have to jostle with boys because boys take up space differently mm. than girls, you know? I'm like, I'm not knocking boys, but I'm just like, I'm very aware of how girls move through the world and, and what society is telling them. Yeah. yeah, it's cool to see a girl on a skateboard in her like pink tutu. And it's fine. It's 100%. Yeah. Yeah, it's you normal. can still be a girl. Exactly. And you can still skate. Yeah, And exactly. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Super rad. Johnny, what, if, what else would you like to discuss? Is there anything else you'd like us to no, mate. touch on? No, no, no rugby, nothing like that, no. no. Well, oh, that? oh, he no. mentioned rugby. No, no. The, let's like, talk about this weekend's. Talk about this let's weekend. talk about this weekend's game. What's the predictions? Why I, uh, I, that's why I said don't want to talk about it. He's going to throw that stage. Yeah, yeah. Are we done? <laughs> Look, it'll be quite a thing, hey? Because, um, funnily enough, I because uh, I, I lived in England for quite a while, and uh, I've been I've always been the creative, you know. So I've never I've never been the guy who was picked for first team any sports, you know. Yeah. Um, but I felt that even though I was never a team player, I was always skating or surfing, um, I almost gave myself the right to, to still enjoy mainstream sports like rugby. Mm-hmm. And in fact, when I went over to the UK, I became like an avid supporter, especially of, of, of the Springboks oh. and the Sharks because I'm from Natal. You know, and I went to school with um, like Butch James and, uh, yeah. and those boys, you know. And um, so yeah, I was at I was at the the 2007 Stade de France when well, I think it was 32 0 wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. I'm yes, sure. I think it was a 32 0 <laughs> scoreline. No, no, no. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, look, we saw what England did against uh, New Zealand in yeah. l- in the last World Cup. Yeah. So I think the boys need to be very careful here. Yeah, look on on a, like on a serious note, like. Um, Look, th- that game, South Africa, France, was probably the best game of rugby I've watched, and if not the best game I've watched. I mean, but it wasn't without. Um, there were still like knock-ons and guys no, fumbling. It was just pure raw. It was fast. It was physical, and like the only the only downside for South Africa is they played it so intense. And like hats off to those guys. Like full respect. Mm. They fully sent it. Like they were throwing the kitchen sink everything. They hit their ran uh, those guys full respect and the same with france that you could see how tired players were mm. they were walking like, that's like a pro so you think they're a bit spent well that no i don't think they are i think they can back it up i think i think they can definitely back up that's my only thing is when you that that physicality there they'll feel that a bit so i think they'll be smart this week in training i mean do you reckon a week is not enough at a recovery time yeah it, it, it depends because i mean it depends on what you're backing on like you know it's like the World Cup now, the week on week on, and you've got to bring that physicality. It's also mentally draining, but yeah. I think it. Is, I think it is. I think when you're so like finely tuned, I think the, the the people they have around them will be so smart. The physios and look, this training week would be about. They don't need to go and do fitness training. They're fit. They, they've, they've done preparation for it. They don't need to go and smash each other. The contact. They need to recover, so they're ready to go again. You've got no doubts that they're going to commit. You've seen it against France. Like, Jesus, boys are throwing themselves around yeah. like no regard for the, the health and safety, which is what you need to have if you're going to be world champs. So this week will be, I think, it'll be pretty much just about preparing the mind and recovering the body. So like we, after a big game, we would, we'd be in the pool on Monday walking, like just doing some social. Boys love it. It's a bit of a laugh. It brings the, the vibe. Some nice food. They played so well. It'll be a nice week. So they can just build up energy levels now. It'll be stretching. It'll be massages. It'll be, they'll be doing the walkthroughs, like play slow, just getting all the plays right. Looking at the team on video, where's their weaknesses? These are the things you don't see in sport. Everyone goes like, "Oh, Johnny, you play rugby. You come home at eleven o'clock." No, like we used to like. I used to leave for training at seven in the morning. I used to come home at four thirty. And meanwhile, we train at the same facility as Newcastle United Football Club. We'd get there at seven or eight o'clock that morning. Morning, yeah. Street, and then like by 11 o'clock they're like sweet Ferrari out of here we're like driving old golfs like we're there at 4 30 <laughs> they're like they're already like somewhere in town shopping with their wives and yeah, they're, yeah. They're, but it's just different like there's so much in that I'm not saying that happens all the time I'm sure they have long days sometimes 
Um, but the, the, the stuff that goes into like analysis, it's just in depth. Mm. That, that's probably what they're just focusing on recovering moves and just knowing who they're playing. So like that's England. Cool. Yeah, that's very cool. But now question is, so, you, so you're not going to go into a pub and go watch the game this weekend? Nah. And go tell them <laughs> <laughs> that, you, <laughs> that you're a former national uh, no, uh, no, player? No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to try and get this episode out before no, so that everyone uh, knows so who Johnny is. So which pub are you going to join? I, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on my own for this one <laughs> for obvious reasons. So people in the in the crowd today we have a <laughs> <laughs> but you no, know it's no, so no. cool to be able to sit down and talk about rugby i doubt there's a, a rugby podcast out there that's sitting talking about a bunch of surfers and skaters yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's nice to flip the script and and you know talk about a subject matter that um extends beyond just sport right now as you know as skateboarding does and it it's about for south africans it's about what it means to the people and the communities and yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest motivating factors and forces behind that team is like where they've come from and, and who they're representing, essentially. You, you, you hit the nail on the head, Stephen. Like, uh, like this weekend, I know I'm English, but I'm also quietly written for South Africa because I know how much it means to the country. Like it means so much to the South Africans. And like rugby is like that. It pulls together. So it's like they need this. Like they need it more, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, in a world of, of uh, huge negativity, we need as much yeah. uh, of the light and the positivity as, as we can get, I think, yeah, as sure. uh, humanity. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with talking about these things. It's all It, it forms part of social upliftment, actually. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't mind saying I'm sitting on the fence for this one. So like okay. I'll throw it out there. I'll get some stick off my English friends, but oh, I'm sure. I, I honestly quite happily see South Africa. You know, it's just, it's, 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 it's a... Something that really would drive, you know, it yeah. just it just gee the country up. It would just give them such a good vibe. So yeah, and, and 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 at this point, we'd like to thank you for for coming to South Africa and all the positive things that you've had to say about South Africa and the positive impact, just from an energy and a good vibe and a, like your whole family. I'm sure are uh, sort of bringing that extra spice. Thanks know, for having us man. to Komiki and to the community of Cape Town. And to Ahoy and the brand and what it's going to become and the cool things that are are planned around that and we're going to skate his bowl soon. Yeah. Again. Someone needs to skate it well. We're going to come yeah. skate the bowl. <laughs> yeah. So that why. So like, uh, are you doing like blunt stalls to like kick off to fake? Oh no, no. You, <laughs> like I, the only person who's been doing that is like talent. He came and skated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, talent here. But uh, yeah, he's also yeah, coming on. Yeah. Watch he's it. done some coaching with my kids and he's a great guy. I love talent. He's just a wonderful human being. But he did some all that yeah, stuff, you know, whatever you call amazing, it. But yeah. I mean, I, I pretty much just surf skate that ball. So I like it. It's, it's got such a nice run that you hit. You hit it from it goes from like shallow end to deep, but it runs. So you hit that first section and you hit it, and then you've got this like wrap around wall. It just be like an open face of a wave. Yeah. I just surf skate that thing, and it's just like you know, you got comic Long Beach. Sometimes there's like a hundred people and the dog surfing. You like you get like a few waves, but they're there. You can actually get that time. It's just so nice. There's no, there's no traffic. There's no humans there. Yeah, you can yeah. like lock the door. <laughs> it's all mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kent, Kent's like looking at him and smiling, but he's he's thinking like he's saying a dirty word. Yeah. No. Surf skate. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's cheating, eh? It's a funny because uh, I think I, uh, I I wasn't convinced. So I'm like, yeah, let's just try the surf skate thing. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a skateboarder, not no, a surfer. No, no. <laughs> and I then totally I tried get it, that. and I was like, oh. This makes sense because we would always try to set up our normal boards and yeah. lose to pump. And you're yeah. like, oh, this makes sense. Yeah. yeah so. Imagine in the old days when you used to travel for and skateboard, those surf skates are so easy. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, because I, like, my normal boards have to be that loose because when I'm skating in traffic on the main road with a taxi, yeah. you have to be able to just. 100. Awesome. You want to watch those taxis, eh? Jeez. I yeah. found that out the hard way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 What? <laughs> the taxis are. <laughs> Yeah, nearly knock yeah. you off your... I'm sure, Kent, you've been probably nearly knocked over a few times. Yeah, but I always say it's like... Uh, luckily for me, I, I, I used to use my skateboard as transport a lot between like Woodstock and the city. So, like, you learn the... I mean, because also just growing up here, like, you learn the patterns and, like, you know how they think. Mm. Almost, mm. You know? Like, you can see when a guy is putting his head out, you know what they're going to do. You know, like, a gachi. Yeah. What's a gachi? Oh, the guy that collects the money. 
Uh, okay. We call him the. Uh, so you do that. Uh, the guy that whistles. The executive that assistant. Yeah. Okay. Executive. <laughs> that guy. Have um, you, ha, sorry to jump in, but have you have you made your daughter watch the search for Animal Chin yet? No, not yet. She. Uh, no. I say made, but I mean like, have you shown it to her? No, she wouldn't sit through it long enough. <laughs> she would probably just. Uh, I mean, but then I might just take offense to it. Yes. I'm like, you don't understand what you're watching. <laughs> Johnny, have you watched it? I don't know what, you, I don't know what you're talking about. Search for animal chin, bro. Is it like he, He's a young man. This. <laughs> he's a young man. This. That, that sounds like a David Attenborough documentary. I don't know. <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the this most... Then. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the most legendary sort of like skate power parole to... Uh, yeah, about, Tony yeah. Hawk and Caballero oh, and right. all of them as youngsters, yeah. basically. And the mythical animal chin, which is kind of like the skate yeah, yeah. master. Ah, I'm terrible with things. I don't watch much TV. Have you watched Dark Town and Zeebos? Uh, I have watched a bit of it, but I, I just... A bit of it. Yeah, I don't, he, I don't watch much TV. He got 10 things. minutes in and then he was watch. like, I'm starting to stink. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to move, I need to move. <laughs> yeah, where's Johnny gone? Like, you know, mm. on, you know somewhere. No, I, yeah. I don't even watch like WSL, I hardly yeah, watch it. Just, yeah. I just, I'd rather, just, yeah. Exactly, but that's actually great though. Like you're coming in with like a completely fresh. Yeah. You know, that's I mean that's fine. Yeah. I mean, mm. we will, we'll forgive you for that. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, okay, yeah. before we wrap things up, Kent, is there anything else that you would like to talk about? A subject dear to you that you'd just like to? No, actually, do you know what? And 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 this might be a thing, and like it's a very really simple thing, but it's something that's very dear to my heart. Any parents out there who come into a surf shop, skate shop? Sports shop, if you're looking for boots for your daughter or whatever. Stay into the market. When you, when you speak to the sales assistant or whatever, don't, when you're buying something for a girl who wants to do something, the worst thing you can ever do to your daughter is say to the salesperson, ah, it's just for a girl, give me anything. Because I see that a lot. With oh. you know? And I just want every parent of a girl who wants to pursue anything, treated the same thing as you would a boy, you know? I mean, I learn, sometimes I have to stop my daughter from putting on a stained T-shirt to school. I'm like, yeah, but if that was a boy, would have been fine with it, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, so give girls equal opportunity and give them the best as what you would do, a boy. That's powerful, eh? Very powerful, it's 100%. It's true though, hey, because my daughter Tallulah surfs at Long Beach, and you know Long Beach can be sometimes it can be a, uh, it can be brutal. Super, yeah, it can be brutal. Like there's amazing surfers there, but it can get very busy. But you see, like the the boys sometimes, and be honest, they're all great surfers, but they're under paddling the girls, and I'm just like you know, I said to Tallulah, you're gonna just have to show them that you're not gonna take it. You're gonna put your head down and just you know send it. And I say to her like they've got to know that you, they've got to see it because as soon as they see a little bit of weakness. That's it. Yeah, They're gone. So if they see you put your head up, like doubt, they'll go. It is like that quick. It's like that little mm. tenth of a second. So like, and I'm watching her now. She's getting better at it. But still, the boys will come around, and you know the, the girls deserve the respect. I mean, the style they have, and you know, I think nowadays girls are getting much better platform. But still, it's not, it's not where it needs to be. Yeah. But, but they've got so much style, and yeah, no, I just think. Uh, what what you're saying is super right. They they they're the future, you know. Yeah, hundred so percent. Respect to the girls that are mixing it up with the boys and yeah. having as much fun and yeah, it's and great. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to uh, Melissa's episode. Yeah, because I mean, as a female skateboarder in South Africa, was done so much. I mean, she's an Olympian. Uh, yeah, there we go. Everybody, this has been the maiden voyage of Down and Deep. I think we had some nice light-hearted conversation, and then we got a little bit deep with Johnny's rib and you're yeah, being chased rib, by yeah. a uh, Rottweiler, no, a pit bull, and something. trying to Oaks trying to steal your phone, and you fighting them off. That's my story when you was like, when, I, I, "How's your rib, Johnny?" Oh, it's fine. <laughs> we'll speak to Kent. <laughs> Last but not least, I just have to say a massive thanks to Marty McFly for letting us use. His Shot studio buddy. space. Shot buddy. Thanks to Elad from Brutal. And thanks to all my sponsors. All the links down below. We're going to say goodbye to Kent Langefeld, Johnny Golding. This is uh, Down Deep signing out. Awesome. Sweet. Thanks, lads. Cool. It's been an absolute pleasure.